Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I will be speaking tonight. I'll be sharing my time tonight with the Minister of National Defence. Civil defence sirens that date back to World War II. Some test them every month, some every year. But when sirens went off in Kviv, Kharkiv, and other cities in Ukraine last week, it wasn't a drill. Ukraine is under attack. And the sound of war reverberates throughout the whole world. The Canadian government has long condemned Russia's incursion into Ukraine. Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity must be respected, and the Ukrainian people must be free to determine their own future. Mr. Speaker, this invasion is unjust, unprovoked, and illegal. And as I said before, Russia will be held accountable. Depuis la semaine dernière, since last week, with our allies and partners, Canada has announced several series of concerted sanctions. These sanctions are severe and they have concrete impacts. They target bank institu Russian institutions and banks, as well as people such as President Putin and his partners, as well as Belarus, which is making this helping make this possible it is canada is also targeting russia's participation in the swift banking network and is implementing measures to prevent russia's central bank from countering these measures inspired by ukrainians who remain strong and resilient everyday people are bravely stepping up to defend their country but despite their extraordinary courage, we can't forget the devastating human consequences of war. Three days ago, I received an email from a Ukrainian Canadian who lives in Calgary. He told me he had relatives and friends who were taking cover in basements, trying to avoid the shelling. Over this past week, I've received many letters like this one. We've all seen the images of subway stations being used as bomb shelters, <clears throat> of missiles striking apartment buildings, of families, including young children, leaving everything behind in search of somewhere safe. The cost of war is always incalculable. But in these dark hours, Canada will continue to be resolute in its support for Ukraine. Depuis 2015, dans le cas since 2015, in the, with the Op Unifier campaign, the Canadian Armed Forces have trained more than 33,000 members of Ukraine's Canadian Ar Armed Forces, rather, and we all applaud their ability to withstand the aggressor. We will continue to, se to send humanitarian and other aid. Mr. Speaker, Canadians are continuing to stand with Ukrainians. As I said to President Zelensky last week, we are all deeply inspired by his courage, by the courage of his compatriots as well. President Putin clearly underestimated the courage and the resilience of the Ukrainian people, as well as he underestimated the determination of Ukraine's allies and partners. The many people I met showed me how much they loved their country and how hard they had fought for democracy. Listening to them reminded me of how peace and stability is not something we could or should ever take for granted. Now, with the unfolding tragedy in Ukraine, the whole world is reminded once again just how fragile peace can be. Mr. Speaker, in the shadow of authoritarianism, we here know that the path forward is the rule of law, universal values, and freedom. That's why Canadians and members of this House stand united with Ukraine. Democracies everywhere stand together 
We stand with the people around the globe protesting against this brutal war from Vancouver to Montreal, from Berlin to Prague, from Minsk to Moscow and St. Petersburg. We hear their voices and we all hope they will overcome the sound of sirens and bombs. Thank you. Slava Ukraini. Question.